Hello everyone, this is Pejman Rusty and today I wanted to talk a little about MLflow which is the platform that uh, help us to, to track, to save uh, the, the parameters, uh, the performance of uh, our model when we do the fine tuning and so on and in general it gives us a possibility to have the, the workflow okay, from creation of the model it doesn't matter we, we have its possibility to use several uh, platforms such as tensorflow pytorch cross uh, scikit learn or any other uh, platform so we create the model so for the tracking it will save uh, parameters uh, artifacts uh, metadata and then the metrics so evaluation metrics and so on and then if we are satisfied with the model so we can go for uh, registering the, the model it means that we will go for the deployment of the model and then we can also save it in uh, other platforms or like Docker or, or any others. Okay. Uh, actually, I don't want really to go to the to talk about the ML flow. There are lots of documents and the tutorials on the internet. You can you can look at look at them uh, for the uh, such a basic ML flow and, and so on. Uh, here, I my aim is to show you how we can use ML flow uh, and add it to your existing code. Uh, I give you an example of this classical CNN uh, CNN classification, and uh, we'll see that with couple of lines we can easily add it to our uh, to our code and we we use it. Okay, uh, the first thing that we should uh, talk about that is that okay, for MLflow we need a server. So what what does it mean server? So it means that it can be a computer that uh, we save the all the the parameters and metadata on, on that and, and the, the model and it make easy to to go that this server can be on your uh, local machine your laptop your your computer or it can be online on azure aws or or google cloud or any others uh, uh, online online servers okay so now we start with uh, with the, the the code here so uh, first uh, i show you the the first code so if i zoom it that you can you can see in terminal so i made the uh, virtual environment for for mflow uh, i will activate it conda activate mlflow okay so well, you can have any other name for for that, or you can use one of your uh, your available virtual um, environments. Okay, now I have my codes in desktop. Okay, and I wrote them in a Jupyter notebook. Okay, uh, so you can write it in a Python format or or any other format. Okay, it doesn't matter. I wrote it in the in the Jupyter the Jupyter notebooks. Okay, I showed a, a single one. So in that, let me to zoom it a little. So here uh, we have a classical CNN model. Okay, so with the with some libraries uh, we import the, the TensorFlow. Okay, and we import the, the MLflow. Okay, so maybe at the beginning you don't have a ML flow, but simply you can uh, you can let me to open a new window. Uh, simply, if you if you are using it for the first time, what you can do so either in the base or in any virtual environment. Okay, for example, if I go ML flow. You can simply install it with pip pip install mlflow okay so simply with the pip install mlflow you can you can install so actually i don't uh, run this because it's already installed on my uh, on my, my system okay and when it's installed you can uh, you can import it uh, easily and you can import the mlflow tensorflow that is uh, it's used for um, uh, for for taking the lock. So if I search on uh, that, so I can show it to you. So you can find the information on the documentation of the of the MLflow. Here talking about the MLflow uh, TensorFlow. 
So here it gives us the, the possibility to take the log of our, uh, of our, our model. It has lots of parameters. So uh, for example, uh, we can have the um, we can have save the model on every n iteration. So here by default is one, but we can go for the two, three, or whatever. So it said that should I take a um, um, log of the model? It's by default is true, but we can we can change it. And um, lots of lots of parameters that if we use this, it automatically will take the log of all of this this um, this uh, these this points. So. One of one important thing that you usually if if you are working on the the CNN, so you know that if you have the checkpoint to uh, to to check uh, if there is an improvement on the on the on the model uh, and save it that. So it's uh, something that we usually uh, write it. But here, if you use the auto log, it's already there. So checkpoint is true. Uh, we can have the we say that I mean which uh, parameter uh, metric should I uh, monitor? So we, we define it uh, val loss or any other parameter, any other um, uh, metrics uh, and so on. And it's already and it's uh, saved the best model. Okay, for for us. So we don't need to write it in our in our code. So this is the one. So if you want, you can have uh, more information about this, but that I don't go really on, on that. I come back to my code. So here we saw that we uh, we uh, we import it, and then uh, we have the uh, MLflow tensor auto lock. Just this we added at the beginning of our our code. The rest is the classic CNN. So here I use the MNIST, but you can use any other uh, databases. In one of the example in, in, the, in this video, I will show you uh, that how we can use another one, but there is no, no really different. And we don't touch all our codes, in, in fact, uh, that much. So here is just loading, uh, reshaping, and here we make a model, classical, model uh, for for mnist the uh, two layers of the convolution and then flat and and draw and dense uh, dense layer optimizer you see that these are the classic one even i don't uh, don't touch it and then the only thing that i will add it's uh, it's here okay so i define an experiment so for example mnist classification let's say uh, new new one or whatever so you can you can use it and then uh, that's the one that we it's necessary to do this so we should use uh, mlflow start run to, to run mlflow on the on our code and inside that uh, we we can define some parameters so we give it a name so for example i said that what is the optimizer what is the last function some information for example you can add the outer even even we can uh, we can remove it so it's not necessary okay uh, but it's good to to have as much as information on that later you can back to 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 it uh, Then the train model like the one that we we do all the time on the CNN and then for the um, For the evaluation on the on the test uh, test data And here we define what are the the lag metrics. So we said that okay uh, save the the test loss and the, the test accuracy Okay, and then we say that also take a log of the of the model to save it because we need for the deployment after. So if I wanted to to just uh, run it simply, uh, let's be run. Okay, I think it's okay. I just put two two epochs, but to be to be fast. I you know that in the two epochs we cannot evaluate the model, but this is not the aim of this. I just wanted to show you how we can implement MLflow. For for that, is two two epochs would be would be enough, okay? And then when it finished, we can go uh, to 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 see on the platform of the dashboard of the MLflow how we can do this. So uh, okay, I think it's it's alright. I open the terminal, new terminal. Okay, and on that, what I do, I go to activate my 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 my, uh, my environment, virtual environment, MLflow. So and also I change the direction to where I have my my code, and now that I'm here, what I will write, I will write MLflow UI. Okay, so it will run it and it give us the the address for the local 
and local uh, server so here 127.0.0.1 uh, uh, on the port of 500 so i just copy this and i go to browser i paste it here okay here we will see that it's written mnist classification new one this is the one that we we made and if i open it okay so i zoom it so here uh, we have different different uh, different tabs so on the overview it give a of uh, of general overview on our, our code uh, on our, on our uh, model so when it's created who created it uh, and there is a, it give an id because when later we can uh, retrieve it run id so we'll see how, where we can use it especially for the uh, deployment and, and testing and so on uh, so it's talking about the database that uh, it's used uh, give the parameter what are the parameters that we use so the epsilon the last function it automatically save everything for us and if you come i come back uh, later on that so uh, e e easily i understand what was the the parameters in that and i don't need to go onto my code and see and check it every time okay even in this this part it give the metrics uh, that we we define as the val loss validation accuracy accuracy for the uh, training for the te validation and the testing also here it give us the curves uh, for for that so i uh, uh, we can uh, we can see it so uh, as it was for two two epochs is not really uh, meaningful um, to talk uh, to talk about them but this is the accuracy and uh, validation uh, validation curves that we can see uh, uh, here in our model to realize if there is an overfitting or not and if we go to the artifacts we here we have the access to the uh, information of the model for example if i uh, open an uh, ml model we said that what was the um, the the information so i already on the on the conda conda environment find uh, uh, it was in the python environment so it's the good good one if you wanted to put it in the docker and we use it uh, as uh, other uh, in other place so this is something that we needed uh in the conda we said that what we we used okay ml flow uh, this is the version cloud peak numpy tensor flow and for the python environment these are the the package that i, I use and, and so on requirement is this, this this one and it also on the, on the metadata that he gives us so it gives us for the for the data and, and so on and if i put it here so here you will see that it also give uh, some uh, for validation give us some uh, some code to, uh, to to have access to the model because uh, this, this is the idea of that and we can we can use it for example if you wanted to validate it with the uh, for example, we panda data frames. So here, this is the one that we we have to read from the panda and do the prediction, and and so on. Okay. So here are some uh, some some examples of of uh, of that. So if I zoom it, so you have the the code. So if you wanted to use it on Spark, you can also 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 use it. Okay. So you saw that. Um, what we we did we just use the cnn classical cnn classification and with a couple of lines of code we added the uh, um, ml flow to that and we realized that okay it can save everything for us and for the deployment we can we can use it or we can uh, use it to track uh, when we are creating more than one model here in our code we just created one model the CNN model is that okay go that but most of the time we should do the hyperparameter tuning for the hyperparameter tuning it means that every time it create a model and each it has its performance and so on okay and we wanted to see that if we can use ml flow for for that is quite useful because it's uh, we run it and then we will come back uh, to it uh, a couple of hours after or a couple of days after because it takes time to depend on the code and we track uh, them and we see that which model is good and we, we use that that model this is something that i will explain you in the, the next video uh I can say that it's not it's almost uh, similar to this we just change uh, some some parts of that and we'll see how we can uh, we can we can use that okay so i stopped the, the video at this this moment and we'll see you again in the in the next video